Caitlin Clark finished up one of the most remarkable years of basketball playing up in, uh, in quite some time. Caitlin Clark, known for her basketball skills, recently turned heads with her impressive participation in the LPGA, the Onico Pro-AM golf event. This comes as a surprise to many fans who have been eager to learn more about her future in golf. During the event, she was paired with notable players like Nellie Korda and Annika Sorenstam, and her performance generated significant excitement. Clark revealed that her love for golf started with her father, and she has a remarkable touch for the game, demonstrating impressive putting skills and a strong approach game. Sporting News YouTube while basketball remains her primary focus, her participation in such a prestigious event showcases her broad athletic talent and has fans eagerly awaiting more of her cross-sport ventures. She just absolutely did it all and became a, a magnet for attention and an, uh, an icon for sports fans, certainly little girls, certainly mine as well playing her basketball and watching her play. Caitlin Clark's decision to join the world of golf is surprising to many, especially for WNBA players. In a world where athletes typically devote themselves exclusively to their primary sport, Clark has stepped outside the norm. By participating in the LPGA, the Onical Pro-AM event, she has shown that her skills extend beyond basketball. This move has not only deepened her connection with the sports world, but also boosted her popularity in golf. Her success in multiple sports now serves as an inspiring example for other WNBA players, suggesting that expanding one's horizons and exploring different athletic ventures can be both exciting and rewarding. But make no mistake, Caitlin Clark is doing things beyond her. Caitlin Clark's foray into golf has certainly raised eyebrows, especially among basketball players. Her decision to compete in the LPGA, the Onico Pro-AM, has not only showcased her multi-sport talents, but has also set her apart from others in the basketball world. Clark's ability to excel on the court and on the golf course has given basketball players a new standard to aspire to. This bold move challenges the typical boundaries of professional athletics, where players usually focus solely on their primary sport. By embracing golf with the same passion she brings to basketball, Clark has inspired her peers to think beyond the confines of their sport. One of the greatest years of basketball with work put in by anybody. Let's begin with the figures that caused statisticians to come up with new adjectives. Clark scored 19.2 points on average, 8.4 assists, 5.7 rebounds, and 1.3 steals per game weren't just respectable numbers for a rookie. They were exceptional numbers for any player in the league. Her 337 assists set a new league record for the most assists in a season, demonstrating her capacity to improve her team as a whole, but it went beyond the numbers. A triple-double, not just once but twice, was something no freshman had ever accomplished before, but Clark didn't stop there. The impact of Clark's performances went well beyond the stat sheet. Under her direction, the Indiana Fever, who had been struggling for years, found new life and surged to a 20-win, 20-loss record, their first 20-win season since 2015. More significantly, Clark led the team to their first playoff appearance, ending a protracted postseason drought. Her 19 assists in a single game set yet another record, demonstrating that her vision and playmaking ability were on another level. That's our goal. It's our goal to get to the playoffs. Our goal is to be in the playoffs. Our goal is to just continue to be competing for a championship. Not only did her thrilling play on the court win games, but it also caused attendance to soar, jersey sales to soar, and the Indiana fever to instantly become a must-see. TV Every Game demonstrated Clark's ability to improve her teammates by opening up the floor and creating opportunities that left the defenders reeling. The praise came in as fast as the broken records. Clark's unanimous selection as the WNBA Rookie of the Year is evidence of her supremacy. Another feather in her crown was being chosen for the All-Star Game with the highest votes, which demonstrated her ability to compete with the league's more seasoned players and thrill the crowd. Caitlin Clark is way better, way sooner than anybody thought. What made Clark's accomplishments even more remarkable was how she managed the pressure of entering the league with so much excitement. She not only met but 
surpassed expectations thanks to her poise in the spotlight, her ability to perform in pivotal situations, and her unwavering focus. Drew is compared to Larry Bird and other legends, Maravich, Pete, Steph Curry, and even the legendary Michael Jordan himself. But perhaps the most important thing about Clark's season was how it changed the idea of what a WNBA rookie could achieve. She didn't just raise the bar, she sent it skyward. Going forward, rookies will be judged by Clark's amazing standard, which seems unfair in its loftiness. If you've watched this far and are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable all notifications. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, but let's get back to the action. But she also did it with the spotlight on her at a very young age. Fame is hitting this young lady's life. And uh, very, very rarely did I see a misstep or, or something that I wouldn't want to show my daughter. Literally every step of the way, it's just like, watch her, watch how she plays, watch how she handles her business. As Clark's fame grew, so did the target on her back. The WNBA sensation, the phenom, was set to encounter obstacles that would try her determination like never before fans were enthralled with breaking season, but it also brought with it harsh criticism and unanticipated controversies. During a pivotal game against the Connecticut Sun, an IPUK left Clark reeling. What should have been a routine play suddenly became the focus of heated debate across the basketball world. Clark went down, but no foul was called. The playoffs were supposed to be Clark's defining moment, but instead they became the center of a firestorm that would engulf the young star. As everyone else has seen this angle, I'm calling her in and I'm saying to her, I need answers. Fans and pundits analyzed every replay of the event, raising concerns about the player's safety and the refereeing. They also questioned the poke's motivations. Christine Brennan, a columnist for USA Today, brought up the subject of purpose, which infuriated the WNBA Players Union and escalated the debate. When you went and uh, kind of swatted at Caitlin, did you intend to hit her in the eye? And, and if so, could you just, or, or, or if not, either way, could you talk about what happened on that play? I just, I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. That doesn't even make sense to me. But no, I didn't. I didn't know I hit her, actually. Um, I was trying to make a play on the ball, and I guess I followed through and I hit her. So obviously, it's never intentional. That's not even like the type of player that I am. However, the eye poke was only the beginning. Did you know that out of the 144 players in the W, Clark received 177% of all flagrant fouls called in the league? Let's not even consider the number of times flagrant fouls went uncalled. That number could have easily doubled the number of teams that were responsible for 80% of those fouls. The Chicago Sky, whose head coach was recently fired, is the team that was responsible for 80% of those fouls. Why is it that when Caitlin Clark is hit with excessive contact, fouls are not called, but when she slaps the rim padding, there is an instant technical foul, and let's not get into the rulebook debate, here's Diana Teresai doing the exact same thing, but no technical was given. Why does officiating seem to have a double standard when it comes to Clark? Let me show you. Let me show you. Look at that. Bro, she just did the same exact movement as what Clark did, except Clark hit it lower. Diana did it straight on and loud. He picks off the pass, and Diana Taurasi, they'll count the bucket. And and one coming up for DT. Right in front of the rest, blatantly not even acting on it. Despite the raging controversies, Clark's focus remained unwavering and her ability to rise above the noise and continue performing at an elite level earned her respect from both opponents and teammates. The controversy surrounding Clark's season exposed the complex landscape of modern sports startups. As Clark's fame grew, so did the dark underbelly of online hate. Her response to adversity only added to her growing legend. Although her exceptional success brought the WNBA fresh attention and excitement, it also exposed her to levels of scrutiny and criticism that very few players have ever experienced. Despite this, Clark's fortitude has endured. Every obstacle she faced appeared to strengthen her resolve and the IPOC incident, 
among many others, served as a focal point for conversations regarding player safety and improved officiating. Yeah, I think just being competitive is who I am. It's what I've done my whole career. Um, I think at times there's a little, there's ways I can probably channel it a little bit better, but that's just basketball at the end of the day. Um, no, that's never gonna, that's never gonna change. I'm never gonna lose that. I feel like I'm getting hammered. Um, I don't know. I appreciate Christy getting a tech too. Like, I, I don't know. Behind the scenes, while the controversy raged, the league was about to undergo a change unlike anything it had seen in its 27-year history. What exactly did Caitlin Clark do that had everyone glued to their screens, from diehard fans to casual observers? The explanation is found in what can only be called the Caitlin Clark effect. Her influence on the WNBA went beyond her on-court exploits. Rather, it was a seismic shift that completely changed the women's sports landscape. Her presence alone broke viewing records that had existed for more than 20 years and propelled the league into uncharted territory. And the fever are going to be over 200,000 higher than the next highest total attendance in league history. Clarkonomics, my friend! Let's talk numbers. During Clark's first season, there were an incredible 21 broadcasts with her Drew drawing over a million viewers each. This wasn't just a slight increase. Rather, it was a quantum leap for a league that had previously struggled to consistently hit those numbers. The Indiana Fever, who had previously been an afterthought in the WNBA hierarchy, suddenly became essential CTV, and the one thing that most of those games had in common was, yes, you guessed it, Caitlin Elizabeth Clark. But it wasn't just about eyes on screens. With an average attendance of over 17,000 per home game, the Indiana Fever set an all-time WNBA record. To put that into perspective, this was the same club that had the second-worst attendance in a single season the season before. Clark's magnetic presence translated immediately into filled arenas. Even away games got so intense that opponents had to reserve larger arenas whenever the fever was in town thanks to Clark's transformation of the home court into the most sought-after attraction in town. The WNBA has seen record-breaking numbers this season in viewership, ticket sales, merch sales, and just overall growth of the league.